Yeah, so I hope you're not as tired as the clicker, but that one got a new battery. <laughs> so um, it's actually not only me, but it's also the wonderful Hello everyone. Carlos Torres, um, who's a uh, yeah, local... Uh, Specialist solution architect in storage. And he even speaks Italian, <laughs> so that's helpful. Um, so we, we'll start um, with a little bit of an overview of what's storage, and then Carlos will talk about um, what we had with OCS3, uh, which worked for OCP3, and then I'll give you a little bit of an outlook what's coming with OCS4.2, which will be made available with OpenShift 4.2. All right, so um, with OpenShift and Kubernetes, you have um, a very broad overview of what kind of storage providers you can take. And you see some listed here. And um, if you were using OCS already, you were using Clusterfest there. And it's, it's quite a large list of options. And today we want to um, talk a little bit about why you should uh, consider OCS for OpenShift. Um, if you're looking at uh, Kubernetes persistent storage, then there's two things you can do. Very early in the Kubernetes days, people were still doing static provisioning of PVs. So you, as an admin, create PVs, and then once a user creates a, um, a claim, a PVC, that gets matched with what's out there. And nowadays, we do want to do dynamic provisioning. So once a user does his claim a PVC, um, we do actually create the thing in the back end. And when the user frees that up, it's automatically, automatically uh, reclaimed, deleted um, in the back end storage. So that's what we do today. And most things support that already. Um, the basic storage needs in a Kubernetes OpenShift environment is uh, most of the time registry storage. So most people that talk to us um, do want to keep the registry on uh, a persistent layer um, because that way they can distribute that over all nodes and that doesn't e not only help with um, retaining the registry when a node fails, but it also allows you to distribute that to other locations. Um, then obviously you want the file storage for the containers to store anything, uh, including databases. Um, but what's now new with 4.2, you don't also get block storage for containers. You can directly access blocks and directly write to things. You could even run Ceph on a Ceph provided block storage. <laughs> And then something that's not covered by o OCS, but it's also storage, is ephemeral storage, where we're just temporarily storing information and we throw it away when the, the pod is not used anymore. Um, what we consider storage, um, we, uh, we divide that into three categories. So we have the traditional storage arrays and appliances, um, which are usually have a vendor login. You do usually have these in your data centers, and you can attach them from the outside, obviously, to your uh, OpenShift environment. You got your uh, point play storage things that are not necessarily Kubernetes aware, but um, the most important thing for us is they're usually limited to one environment. So either it's um, inside of your own data centers, or it's inside of a single cloud environment. And what we target with OCS is we want to not only run in public clouds, but we also want to run inside of your own data center and make that um, a homogeneous uh, experience for you so that your data can move wherever you need it to, to be. Uh, and that, for us, looks like this. You have your bare metal wi virtual machines, containers, the private cloud, public cloud, and your legacy storage needs. And uh, everything is supported by um, the same storage environment. So 
just that that should be enough for a, a quick overview and I hand it over to Carlos. Thanks, Chris. Well, um, as uh, Red Hat value proposition in our portfolio, so we have uh, a story for the present that means OpenShift 3.11. And the story that I'm going to tell you is the 3.11 product based on uh, Gluster Engine. Then Chris we will tell the story about the future that is will be uh, 4.2 and is based, in, uh, based on Ceph. So regarding 3.11 and uh, regarding the overall story of container storage, so uh, as Chris mentioned before, so we need the storage for the infra part and Red Hat provides the storage for the infra. And the infra means registry, metrics, and logins. Very important because you know you are running on registry your container images, and your metrics and login uh, you are probably uh, under um, auditing process. So you need to keep your metrics and login information safe. And then you have the storage for applications, stateful applications. So in the previous presentation there were a session about Kafka. There are multiple applications like three scales that requires stateful then requires persistent storage based on that so uh, what is the proposition of red hat how to uh, how can you deploy your red hat storage inside or outside openshift so on the left side um, we see a deployment model in uh, it's based on storage for containers and it means that you are running your platform independently than your storage so you have your storage based on dedicated VMs, where you run your uh, binaries of our uh, storage product. Then you connect through APIs the storage to OpenShift. But the, the both parts, contain, uh, OpenShift and OCS, o OpenShift Container Storage, are independent. Then you have on the right the uh, flavor that is called storage in containers. And it means your storage becomes an application and it's delivered inside OpenShift. Means that uh, you have binaries, but the binaries are in pod, pod container pod format and are completely managed by OpenShift. What's the difference about both? Because for, for a regulation point of view and for uh, internal process, uh, probably you uh, want to maintain your independency between infra and uh, uh, application stuff, right? So there are dedicated storage teams and there are dedicated <coughs> developer teams. So on the left side, keep independent, you address this request. On the other side, you have everything managed in OpenShift. So developers can manage the storage independently. Okay, so what about the architecture? So this is the um, container flavor architecture. So the storage is running as application inside OpenShift. So you have a pod, and then you have the data plane. The data plane of the current version, 3.11, is uh, based on Gluster. So you have uh, the so-called, in Gluster, uh, it's called bricks. So you have uh, five systems and nodes that are federated together and provide you the cluster, the storage part. Then you have the control plane. The control plane is the API that is uh, integrated with OpenShift and enables the dynamic provisioning features and all the features that regards uh, the persistent volume claims. So basically, with uh, 3. Dot version 3, we deliver um, version after version new features. So this is um, uh, a table about uh, the uh, three last versions fr from 3.9 to 3.11. What are the features that we deliver? Uh, in these three versions, and you can see that uh, version after version we deliver new features. So regarding Kubernetes integration, we support uh, uh, block uh, file, uh, uh, object storage, then uh, uh, read-write many, read-write once, uh, read-only, dynamic provisioning, PV resize. Uh, then from OpenShift point of view, uh, in the last version you can manage the storage directly from the web console. Uh, you can install the storage from the playbook, the same playbook that you use to install uh, the OpenShift. Then the storage services that we provide, as I said before, multi-protocol storage, snapshot, uh, geo-replication for DR. In terms of infrastructure, the solution is agnostic, so it runs everywhere when OpenShift runs. 
In terms of support, so uh, the uh, OCS uh, 3 version, 3.11, is aligned in terms of support with OpenShift. It means that uh, um, based on the life cycle, uh, OCS will be supported until the day that you have seen there. And there is the link for the um, uh, public reference about the support life cycle. And uh, regarding um, the new OCPv4, so uh, OCPv4 has uh, have several requirements. Uh, the main requirements are related to the operator thing. So you have uh, probably heard my colleagues about uh, operators. Uh, very interesting session because they simplify the life cycle of the applications inside the um, OpenShift. And then the storage, again, the storage must be aligned with this new way of life cycle through operators. Then you have to deal in uh, uh, OpenShift version 4 with a standard Kubernetes that uh, is called CSI. CSI is an agreement between storage vendors when finally uh, all the, main, uh, the more important vendors agree to follow and to create a standard APIs to manage the storage. It includes uh, how to deliver storage classes, uh, the ability to encrypt credentials, uh, create multiple CSI drivers, how to manage the CSI per cluster. You can see in, in those tables what are more or less the um, APIs uh, and the uh, API calls that are related to the CSI drivers. So this is a new challenge for storage, for storage industry to align to those APIs. And this is good because, you know, uh, in the past, everyone builds their own driver, right? So different technology, di very difficult to integrate. Now we have a standard CSI, and you need to be aligned with those standards. So we are planning to deliver and to respect those standards in OCP uh, 4.2. So what is the plan? Is OCS 3.11 supported? Unfortunately, no. But we have a new product version. The version is OCS. Uh, version 4.2 that uh, Chris will talk about uh, now. Uh, but regarding the um, use case where you are already uh, OCS 3.11 customers, so you need to migrate your workloads, right? Uh, we uh, have um, a solution to migrate the workloads from uh, OCS 3.11 to uh, OCS 4.2. So the solution is a migration tool that it, it is integrated in OpenShift. Uh, so for more information, uh, please keep in contact with us. We, we can provide you more information about it. So Chris, next version, 4.2. Next version, 4.2. Thanks, Carlos. Um, and I do see that some people actually woken up and started listening. So that's wonderful. Um, so you've heard about operators today a lot. So I just want to quickly go, go over the framework again. Um, goal of an operator is not only to install it, but to actually help you in day two operations. So uh, uh, updates, back over, uh, back up, failover, and restore. So you shouldn't be worried about all these things anymore. I think that most of you probably understood that now. Um, but what's also important is it's a native application for Kubernetes. We're not reinventing anything special here. And because OCP4 uh, wants us all to run everything as an operator, obviously OCS also runs as an operator. So what has changed now? We, we changed OpenShift 3 to 4. And then, consequently, we also changed OCS from three to four. And um, to, to spice it up, we completely changed the backend for OCS. So as I um, told you this morning already, um, OCS 3 was cluster-based. And now we base it on Rook uh, for Ceph. And we base it on Nuba for the Red Hat multi-cloud gateway, which will allow you to do um, cool things between clouds for your object storage. 
Um, and as scholars already said, you cannot use OCS3 on OpenShift 4. That's uh, unfortunate, <laughs> but um, I can ensure you that the wait is worth it, um, because with 4.2, OpenShift 4.2, you will be able to use OCS. Um, and if you were to use OpenShift 3 already, there is a migration tool, and this is the default migration tool that you would um, use anyways to port over your pods, and that will also be able to port over your persistent storage from the cluster-based OCS to the Cephanuba-based OCS. So the new technology stack looks like this. We have Rook, uh, with Ceph and Nuba, and um, Ceph with Rook already has an operator, and uh, we are basically putting an operator on operator, as you heard earlier, um, that will uh, manage all the storage underneath. So why did we move to Ceph uh, from ClusterFS? Um, that's a question I get a lot, um, but it does make sense. Ceph has already been supported from the very beginning of Kubernetes as a community effort, and uh, we heard customers that also wanted to have an S3 endpoint inside of their OpenShift clusters. And now with Ceph and Nuba, we can actually deliver on this demand very well. Um, so um, I'm not sure how many people know Rook already, but um, it's also a project that's community driven. Um, so it doesn't didn't start inside of Red Hat, but um, we're now an active contributor in this community. And um, its main purpose is to bootstrap a Ceph cluster and make it available for OpenShift and Kubernetes and do the dynamic provisioning that I talked about earlier. And also support lifecycle changes. So we will be able to do what we promised with an operator to do upgrades and backups and restores and all of this. Um, the Rook architecture at first glance looks quite complicated, but um, the diagram on the left shows you the things you have anyways. And um, you can now have new objects that you control via cube control or now the OpenShift console with the UI. Um, and you can just request a new storage pool, and that will translate into a Ceph pool, for example. Or you can request file storage or object storage or block storage as well. And then that will communicate on the right with the Rook operator, the Ceph daemons, um, will do the actual work in the back end, and then either using the Flex driver or the CSI driver, um, you can actually attach and mount this uh, storage onto your pods. So um, with OCS 4.2, we will be going the CSI path, because that's now available in OpenShift 4.2, and it also allows us to very quickly develop new features for, for our storage. Um, so that's just a, an overview. Um, down here, we have everything that we need anyways for Ceph. So the OSDs that store the data, we have the monitors that um, contain the cluster information. We have the managers that uh, will allow monitoring and communication with the cluster from the outside, and the MDSs for the distributed file system. And um, using the Rook layer on top, the blue one, um, we can now uh, export those uh, volumes to the pods, make that available. Um, now we talked not enough about Ceph. Um, talking about Nuba, because a lot of people don't know that already, is our answer to provide um, a very enterprise-ready S3. So Ceph already implements an S3 endpoint that a lot of people use, 
and that has been proven to work on a very high scale already. But Nuba uh, adds uh, very nice enterprise features, especially when we want to work in multiple clouds in parallel. So um, one of these multi-cloud gateway functionalities that are very nice is we can have an active-active read-write access between clouds. So you have one endpoint that your application uses in a back end. You can use multiple clouds that your data is distributed over. And you can define how it's distributed. So we will call Nuba, the product and the company, um, RHOCS Multi Cloud Gateway, <laughs> or short, just the Multi Cloud Gateway. And it will be included in the regular OCS package. Um, and this is just an overview site. So you have your apps in OpenShift up there. They're using S3, and they can use different buckets. And every bucket can have a different configuration, uh, have one endpoint, multiple endpoints, whatever. So summing this up, um, you do have OCS in the operator hub soon. <laughs> and um, then you can just install it from operator hub. You click on storage, and um, either you select that you want to have specifically storage for Red Hat, then you will only see that, or um, you will see the other storage uh, things. Um, once installed, you have access to the monitoring and management, so you can do everything from the UI. Um, you probably remember this slide. Um, we we saw that this morning already. Um, so that's healthy cluster, uh, unhappy cluster where nodes failed, um, and you will have access to all of that, and it's. In, uh, included into the whole OpenShift metric system. It's hooked up to Prometheus. You can get alerts. So the whole thing that you need for, for the day two operations as well. So um, OCS 4.2 file block object support. Um, Prometheus, it's FIPS compliant if you need that. Um, we do support VMware and AWS right from the start, and we'll add Azure and Google Cloud in later versions. Um, and to sum this up again, this is a very similar slide that we, we seen earlier. Um, if you use OCS, you can deploy um, your storage onto anything uh, that you deploy anywhere. Is it bare metal VMs or inside of containers? And you can uh, not only have the read write once, but also the read write many um, persistent volume claims. And uh, obviously, also use S3 as the gateway. Oh yeah. So, Carlos. That's very, well very hard to slide because I'm a pre so I have to <laughs> tell you something about the SKUs. <laughs> So, um, yeah, basically the SKUs will not change, uh, but uh, let's say uh, since this is new architecture and we are offering, uh, you know, uh, S3 multi-cloud gateway and probably you need to scale your workload. So I recommend you to keep in contact with your Red Hat uh, representative in order to evaluate case by case what are you want to achieve. So if you want to stay with the same workload, um, Basically, it will be the same in terms of SKUs. If you want to scale, of course, we, w we need to make some architecture considerations. So the facts to summarize, uh, and thanks, Keith, uh, Chris, for coming. Uh, so uh, basically, you need to uh, evaluate when you uh, are uh, looking for a storage for to integrate in OpenShift. You need to evaluate, if, is my storage CSI ready, so it's compliant with the, st the industry standard technology. So we offer with uh, OCS 402 this standardization. Then if you are uh, moving to cloud native workloads, so you, are, uh, you want to target S3 because S3 is, is now is 
mostly uh, adopted in the industry and is, is now is replacing even the file sharing because it's the new and flexible way to, to share, uh, you know, buckets. It's very simple, share data and uh, ingest data through S3. So uh, again, we offer Nuba in the solution. So it's a real multi-protocol storage solution with file, block, and object. And uh, uh, basically, this queue, if you are already OCS customer, this queue will remain the same. So you can get access to both products. If you stay on OpenShift 3.11, then you can get access to the containers of uh, OCS 3.11. Otherwise, if you move to OC OCP 4.2, you can get access to the new version product. With that, thanks. Thanks for your time. Thank you.